Today is Wednesday, August 14th, and um, so far it's been one of them days that you just want to forget. Uh, had a couple things break down this morning. Nothing major, just uh, little stuff here and there that's just been a pain in the butt. But um, uh, we got such a long list of things to do right now that I don't even know where to begin to tell you what we're going to do today. So we're just going to go start on one thing and just keep knocking lists. Hey, keep Bill. knocking stuff off the list. Why do we have hay bales here? Well, for example, the tongue on this broke when Jeremy was taking it across the road for the close-up, so we gotta get that fixed. We're in desperate need of uh, rain. You can see Wes's yard is brown. Uh, my West, <laughs> my yard is still green because I haven't mowed it in about four weeks. So, um, yeah, so it was supposed to rain this morning and you see how much it did. There's just a few drops in the dust on the windshield. But, uh, yeah, so we're gonna get started today and just start knocking things off the list. Yeah, so just a few sprinkles this morning and that was it. Um, the weatherman said that there could be a smaller chance this afternoon. Um, let's just hope that we get something out of that because I uh, desperately need it. So, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go here to the barn. Wes is already over here and uh, we gotta do a light switch for the parlor lights and uh, the fans that just, you know, a wet environment uh, gets hit with a water hose when they wash down and all that so it's uh, uh, I started messing up yesterday and um, just had to leave the lights on all night and um, so we'll get that done and then we're also gonna do some cleaning up and getting some spider webs and stuff out so that's where we're gonna get started all right we're just getting the last switch put in uh, we just bent these wires and then we gotta hook them in and then put this one in, this one's done. And then uh, we'll get it tested out and see if it works. Wes just left to uh, go to uh, Home Depot to get a cover for this because they didn't have one at the hardware store in town. You know, like a uh, outside type weather cover for the switches. And um, uh, he's gonna get an AC unit while he's there. For the one that's it's running, but it's, it's just full of crap. It's probably been going for six, seven years, so it's uh, done for. And we'll just take that one out and put a new one in. We'll do that after we do this. But This dairy barn is 30, uh, a little over 37 years old, so this starts to show some some age on it with stuff like this, which all this was was just the switches that were in here. I uh, got, you know, started getting water in it and all that good stuff, and then uh, uh, messing the wires up and corro or. Started getting water in behind it and stuff like that, so uh, the switches just ended up burning up. But every few, I would say every couple years, maybe every few years, you got to end up doing this just because of that. But Home Depot. <clears throat> Need an ace electrician to do this? Huh? Need an ace le electrician to do this? Yeah, I already am. Yeah. yeah. You see the two breakers that are off in the old breaker box? Yeah. Go ahead and turn them on. 
Yeah. Huh? Nice work. Was it sparking on top or where you got it screwed in? Uh... Okay, we were getting a little bit of a spark on this top one, so I'm gonna see if I can get a better connection, I guess. See how you have the... Okay, I'll just leave all this here for when he gets back. And then, uh, just start on the next one. So with those old fluorescent lights, uh, when they go out like that, you can what it is, it's a, a it's called a ballast. It goes in on top there, and it's actually cheaper just to buy a whole new uh, fixture than it is just the ballast. So I called Wes while he's at Home Depot, and he's gonna go go ahead and get a new one. And then all we gotta do is put it up there and put those wire nuts back on and stick it back up in there, and that'll be it. But and then we got the cover to do. Um, Next thing you do is you take the screens off and clean off those windows, all the spider webs and slides and all that good stuff. And then we need to try to get out on the back side of this window too. All right, so we're running out of stuff to do in the barn while waiting on Wes. Uh, I talked to him a while ago and he said that uh, he had everything that we needed, just couldn't find a cover. So I can't remember what else we needed. He said he got a light fixture for 50 bucks. What else was he supposed to get? I don't know either. So, uh, while we're waiting on him, had Jimmy go cut this off. This piece of lay flat hose. This is a tote of Bovaclor. Bovaclor. And then um, it's a molasses base with all the good stuff for. Uh, well, it's got cane molasses, magnesium chloride, magnesium sulfate, and sulfuric acid, all for the close-ups. This is what uh, helps keep cows from getting milk fever when they're calving. So, um, I use this little plastic 90 thing. That's not going to work this year. 
That's what I used last year. So I'm just gonna put this little piece of lay flat hose over it. Hopefully it fits. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and then uh, clamp it on. Trying to keep the splatters down, that's all. Yeah. It's not holding any pressure. New air conditioner is in. It's pretty cool. It, uh, we got a 772 running on auto. 75 degrees in here right now. Uh, it was probably like 90 degrees when we started in here, so. Got all that fixed. That window's always been whatever you want to call it, scum, cloudiness on it. Nothing we can do about that. We got that light switch fixed inside the parlor, which they're milking right now. And then we got that fixture over there. And then we also cleaned that one out, so. So all that's working, we put this in, got it all silicone, put a board over here, because the window's too big. And uh, yeah, it should be a heck of a lot better than it was. And uh, now we gotta go fix that hay trailer. It's already six o'clock, so God, please. Uh, went mess with it a little bit earlier, trying to come up with an idea, and I got one now. So we're gonna go do that real quick, hopefully. All right. Uh, so the bottom of the off the hitch broke off. Um, you know, it's just rust. This basically is what sits on the ground and gets covered in manure and all that stuff. So, just trying to figure out something, some scrap pieces or whatever to put up there to make it work. Because if uh, that's all it's worth, it ain't worth really a whole lot. Just carry some bells. Just needs to roll. Um, if you're going to try to redo this completely, you might as well do the redo the whole trailer. So. Uh, I just can't think of a good idea right now. I just parked the welder. He's already taken off in the trailer, but got it all fixed. Let's go into the close-ups.
Well, this is where this truck got left last night. We're gonna get started and get it moved out of the way. We gotta get the 7210 that's on the other side of the big dozer and uh, get the MoCo hooked up, unhooked off of it. I called earlier this afternoon, John Deere did, and said that the 7200 was ready. So Wes is going to take the 7210 down there tomorrow and come back with the 7200. Uh, 7210 is going to go get figured out why the dash is beep, beeping and flashing telling you to stop because it says uh, hydraulic oil temperature. But there's, there's um, temperature is fine, it's not running hot. So uh, just the whole time, like when I'm cutting, it's just going on and on and on, beeping and beeping, drives you nuts. But uh, so they're going to run some tests on it and figure out why it's doing it. Maybe something simple as a sensor. Or even the uh, the dash. Or it may actually have a problem. I don't know. They're gonna get that figured out. So, see, it's doing it right now. I just started it up. So, and it stops. And then it'll just. There you go. So, let them figure it out. Let them figure that one out because we've tried about everything that we can think of. All right, well, that's moved out of the way. Went ahead and took the blade off that I bent the other day, yesterday. Now we're going to move unhook the MoCo. Well, I don't know where, but memory memory card I had went full, but I actually had one here, so not completely ruined. But we already unhooked the 7210, and we figured if we we're gonna do one, might as well do the other, because 7410 needs to go back on the the new Artex manure spreader. Use a skid steer, had to put air in that tire to bring the blocks out here that the Moco sit on. Now my phone's ringing, and I wonder who that. All right, bye. You drive that tractor. You drive a tractor, I'm gonna run there and start the truck. And then I'm gonna take the skid steer back down there. And then, uh, yeah, I don't know. So this truck has to get inspected. And uh, uh, not this trailer, the belly dump needs to get inspected. So Jeremy's gonna start hauling rock and lime and all that good stuff. So he's gonna hopefully take it in the morning. Hopefully take it in the morning and get it inspected and uh, he's got to fill that truck up decent too, so. Um, we're going to unhook this aluminum trailer and hook the belly dump up. So that's all ready to go. So we're going to run the skid steer back down there and park it and put the tire back on. And then get back out here to this truck. Uh, hook the trailer somewhere up here. And then go hook the belly dump up. All right, we're pulling away from the, the flatbed trailer right now, going over to the belly dump.
All right, I'm gonna jump out and check my fifth wheel. Make sure it's still open and check the height of the trailer and make sure it's uh, right height. Get over. Why? Hurry up, you're slowing me down. Alright, trailer height's good. Uh, fifth wheel was closed, so we opened it back up. Then all we should do is just have to back straight up. Alright, I closed the, manually closed the jaw because something's wrong with that fifth wheel. I checked, uh, I checked my jaw, it was, I could see it, so we're just going to give it a slight pull against to make sure we're connected. And we are. And then uh, I'm going to unlock my fifth wheel. And then I'm going to reverse. Let that slide on forward for the belly dump. Be at the right position, which is about right there. We're gonna give it a little pull forward to make sure we're locked back in. Everything is. So we're gonna go uh, hook it all up now. All right, so we'll get the landing gear up. We'll get the hoses all hooked up. Um, and in the morning, now Jeremy is walking over here right now, I think. Yeah, Jeremy's walking over here right now, but in the morning when he leaves, he'll uh, turn all his lights on and check them again, even though we worked or they worked on them yesterday. I helped a little bit, and then because um, uh, every time you go get something inspected, something magically quits working, right? All right, so this should be ready to go. We gotta go to the same 410 now, hook the manure spreader up. Nobody even look in here. What are you doing? Going to the bathroom. Rag in the cap.
we're gonna take take some of the dry crap up here and put it on the clay on the new lamp and then also we're gonna put dirt in it and probably take the back off and then go around and, and fill those holes in all right how is this hooked up Well, somebody's really upset. They uh, came over to the barn today to help out, and uh, he's been asking to drive the skid steer again. And I keep telling him, well, we don't need it right now. We don't need it right now, so we're not going to go get it just for you to drive it and blah, blah, blah. And uh, I think he was getting kind of hot, so he wanted to go to his grandma's. And hang on, let me close this gate. Wanted to go over to Wes's house and stay with my mom and uh, watch Netflix and YouTube. So uh, while he was in there, we got the skid steer out to drive uh, and move them blocks. And uh, an hour or so later, he came out. And uh, when he figured that out, he's he's pissed now. So. So it's 8.40 and we're headed to the house. Uh, it was getting dark, so I always got to call it a day and try to get some of the other stuff done tomorrow. Oh, let's see. We had a gate get tweaked. Um, Jeremy was scraping this morning uh, with the skid steer. Oh, sorry, sore subject, huh? Anyway, and then uh, so somebody pushed the gate out behind him and he turned He was backing up and he turned around and uh, Hit the gate with the rubber tire and and kind of tweaked it So we still gotta get that fixed uh, the mocos the hay balers. They all need to be blown off and um, uh, The knocking the tanks on the hay balers need to be washed out and um, What else is there? Uh well, in the morning, Wes will load that 7210 up and haul it down to Athens and bring back 7200. And uh, um, that's all I can think of right now. I, I got a lot of stuff I got to do with heifers, and um, I got a lot of. Ooh, dry cows. God dang it. Got to do dry cows tomorrow. Yeah, so I got a lot of stuff to do with the cows and uh, heifers, but kind of have to pick and choose on, on uh, when I can do that because of the heat. So, um, other than that, uh, we're pretty close to being, having everything kind of caught up where we can go and, uh, fix those holes and start spreading manure and all that good stuff. So, um, hopefully tomorrow we'll need to use a skid steer, right? Right? Oh, okay. So, um, anyway, thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. And we'll uh, we'll see you on the next one.